for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, episode 49, always multi-sig, always co-sign. Encrypting my thoughts is a scaling solution. Mexican last night can deliver a wailing ablution. My own jokes make me smile ear to ear. Tragedy stirs, not shakes, peer to peer. Bitcoin, a decentralized timer. Atomic pop, Oppenheimer. Real men always focus on conquering and fucking. Doing hard things like ice road trucking. Friday night boozing, alcohol leads to bruising. Black and bluesing. They say it's a mission impossible, but I'm just Tom. Just cruising. One day I might like to live by the sea, like the root of the sum of the squares of A and B. Why? Because it looks straight at the right angle. It's motivation, the big carrot I dangle. Next, let's look at an equation from physics, again with C, but not heat constant specifics. Streaming education from this platform like SAS, the change in energy over C squared is mass. Women need to be wanted, men want to be needed. No joke, sans comic fonted. Buy Bitcoin or forever you're haunted. What is that smell? What is that whiff? It's Bitcoin derangement syndrome. New case, Spencer Schiff. Price up, down or sideways. Enjoy the tumble. Joining us this week, Diamond Hands Fumble. Absolutely awesome rhyme. That's right, guys. Joining us today, fellow Bitcoiner and pleb, and I would say a friend to the show, we've got Fumble. Fumble, what's happening, my dude? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be back. Very nice cool. See you yeah. again. That's right, huh? Even though he hasn't I been on this show. Ways. <laughs> yeah, I have been on another show, show with me. <laughs> yeah. In some ways, though, Fumble's always been in the pleb underground. Uh, but we'll get we'll get a bit more into that uh, in the in the guest section. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Right now, we are going to move it on over to the numbers. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar. Phil, what do the numbers look like this week? At the time of this recording, the block height is 801,803. The fiat Bitcoin exchange, 29,030. Moscow time, 3444. Total public lightning capacity, 4,764.90. Well, dot nine, actually. Anyways, anyways, fastest fee actually just jumped up. It was eight sats uh, per V-byte before, and now it's up to 20. So, ooh, look at that. And take a look, guys. We've also got the days to the halvening, 265. For the, the fees versus reward um, little chart that you had. It wasn't a chart. It was just kind of, the, the well, I guess it's a chart, the pie chart showing like, oh, it's like, you know, it's mainly um, reward, right? It's mainly um the the the, the coinbase transaction to the to the miners that is mainly paying them well i guess the i guess the coinbase transaction includes the fees as well or doesn't it i'm not sure well, i think like so the, it must it, do it, it, but anyway the, like the, the, fee, the fees that they're getting is, is is relatively small amount right now but i wonder if can you can you click on fees versus reward does it can you look at it over time um because mm. that'd be interesting to see maybe not we'll yeah. we'll, we'll we'll speak to a the, the, the emperor of time chain stats and see see if he's got that data because that, that might be something interesting to look at because people often talk about oh you know what's gonna they, they get worried about oh in the future the miners are gonna be really poor and not have enough money and stuff so like we need to uh you know pay you know do more transactions but i that i think that naturally comes um but it'd be but it'd be interesting to see because of course um things like lightning mean that not as much necessarily has to happen on chain and um yeah obviously more and more people use it but as we add scaling solutions the offset that it's it, there's going to be you know fluctuation so it's going to be interesting to see how that how that changes over time absolutely absolutely all right let's dive into uh, let's dive into some of our number stuff because we've got some uh we've got we've got some interesting numbers to look at all right we got this tweet from bitpain who was a guest of pleb underground a few weeks ago the world contains about 244,000 metric tons of gold. There are 21 million BTC. If you hold one BTC, that is the percent equivalent of 26 pounds of gold, roughly the weight of a standard gold delivery bar, which would sell today for $600,000. What, uh, what are your thoughts on this one before we move on to, we got another really interesting number. Good, good hope. Okay, Phil. So let's do some quick maths here. So the density yeah. of gold is about, it's about oh, wait, it's wait. just wait. under, wait, yeah, before, just under twenty thousand kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, 
So uh, that's 20 tons per meter cubed, roughly. And you're saying there's how many? Sorry? Uh, uh, 144,000. 144,000? 244,000. 244,000. So let's just divide that tons. by 20. That's about 12,000. So 12,000 meters cubed. Um, and apparently that, that volume you can actually fit under the kind of like lower arches of the Eiffel Tower, like all of the gold in the world. There really isn't like volume wise, not that much. That is a pretty bullish number though. But hold on a second. Um, Walton, is it math or maths? I mean, it depends on which side of the pond you are. So it's a pond thing. I was trying to figure that out. So like the word is mathematics and it depends on how you abbreviate it. Maths. Interesting. So both. So are both correct? Math. Yeah, uh, both. Like we're saying maths to refer to like the multiple mathematics. mathematics, right? You have like you know algebra, okay. geometry, all these different things, right? All right, and, all right got it. Yeah, but we're, we're English, so we're, by default, we're going to say that the English way of doing it is correct. And yeah, I was going to say, you're going to say I, I, think, I, I don't really mind. Like, I, I quite often <laughs> flip between them because I'm talking to Americans, like, and so I translate for them because, you know, they struggle with the translation sometimes. If, if somebody says math near me, I say... Because you're a snake. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the uh, the next set of numbers. Uh, this was actually, we, we got tagged actually this morning um, by a fellow Bitcoiner in in this one, okay? And this is pretty nice. So shout out to uh, Sire Sats a lot. Uh, he goes, these numbers are great. Just steady great stacking. Numbers. Yeah, this is, this is actually great. And what is he talking about? Take a look, guys. Look, you know, the case for hodling. I mean, this is fantastic. This is like the longest bear market in history that we've had. BTC hodlers outperformed crypto funds by 69%. Okay. Yeah, Phil, do you know what the best number in this is? Is actually Wait, how yeah. they named their fund. Just scroll up. It's called 21 E6 capital. 21 E6 means 21 times 10 to the 6, which means it's 21 million capital is the name of their fund. Yes. <laughs> It's kind of funny. It is kind. Of, I mean, look, it, it, it's funny, but I think, look, for me, what what's really what's really important is is that these people, right? The the crypto the crypto industry spends millions of dollars in marketing all of this crap, trying to make you think that it's something real. And take a look, us us primitive cavemen hodlers outdid you by simply doing less, being patient. And having conviction, so it's, well, it's it's it's, it's, it's classic. Uh, in the hair, you know. It, it, uh, it, it, that's exactly that's exactly what I was going to say. It's classic oh. tortoise in the hair. Yeah, it's it's people who are just like calmly, dig diligently doing a simple thing as a habit, just hodling, stacking, you know, keep doing that. Whereas the hair, the, the hair's thinking it's so clever, you know, <laughs> rushing around and uh, you know throwing all this VC capital everywhere. So you're uh, saying that go on. The tortoise, the tortoise and the hare is a story about time preference. Interesting. Uh, yeah, but to me, it's also like the the attitude of of the of the of the tortoise and the hare. The hare is rushing around, impatient, you know, trying to trying to beat everyone, and the and the tortoise just needs to plod along, do that simple, ordinary thing over time, and it still comes out ahead. About yeah. sustainable steps. Um, yeah. yeah, I like it. I, I think it's also, you know, it's it's also the um, the message of um, persistence and mm -hmm. fiction, right? Most people, that's actually kind of the biggest problem, right? Most people, it's not that they're not intelligent enough or that they're not talented enough. Uh, quite often, it's because they don't persist. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the uh, the big issue there. Anyways, that that's uh, this is what I had for the uh, for I the. Do you think though the world is 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 the most complicated it's ever been, and so. There's the, you know, the concept of being at a restaurant. I mean, uh, you look at a menu arm and you're slightly overwhelmed by how much choice there is. The world's a bit like that with everything. And I think it leads to, yeah, paralysis of a whole bunch of people there. I don't know what to do, so they do nothing. Yeah, that's very true. You know what? <laughs> it, I, I, and to your point, um, before we wrap up the, uh, the numbers section, the CEO of Costco... Um, made exactly that point and they found that they were able to boost their sales by having okay by having less variety 
right? Like a person, it, this is the, the weird thing, right? He's like, we could carry five brands of ketchup. He goes, you're more likely to walk out with no ketchup. He goes, but if I provide you three you're more, or yeah, two. You're more than like you're more than likely gonna walk out with one of them. So, but that's also why you don't provide you don't provide one as well. It's like if if it, because, yeah. <laughs> because then, 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 you're, then, then the offer to your customer is it's this or nothing. Whereas if you say it's this or this, then they then they try and choose the better one. Whereas if there's only one, the better one might be nothing. Exactly. See, I mean, it's, it's still yeah. true if there's two or three things, but they you know they, they don't think the same. It, it changes. It changes the way we think about it. I remember once I once did a sales training course and, and, and the thing that amused me was there's something like, you know, 84% or 86% of uh, buying decisions are emotional. Like, what the fuck does that even mean for starters? But how do you even get that? Like, what, what, it, what, like not, but, but I think the point is, is that there is kind of lots of weird psychology in involved in buying. Uh, and it's not just pe people aren't just rational actors. Um, and that's pretty why macroeconomics is a little crock. Like, Look, eighty-two well, percent of statistics are made up on the spot. Uh, I heard, I heard that ninety-six percent of statistics were made made up to prove a point. And as many as seven fifths of all people don't understand <laughs> fractions. <laughs> all right, guys, that wraps up the numbers. That wraps up the numbers. Okay, we are moving on to the fireside chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out, cyphersafe.io. You can't trust paper. You need to store your seed in something that's virtually indestructible. Check out the all-new virtually indestructible Cypher Grid at cyphersafe.io. It also comes with an awesome little punch tool. That's the Cypher Grid at cyphersafe.io. Also from cyphersafe.io, if you appreciate and like Bitcoin art made by fellow Bitcoiners, check out the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle, physical Bitcoin art, 16 ounces of solid titanium, very beautiful detailing. Check it out, the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle at cyphersafe.io. Guys, I'd just like to briefly share, like, what, what is this uh, shape that Phil keeps referring to in this fancy uh, crafted good uh, from our sponsor um, and I just want to look at what, what what is this all about so we go to Wikipedia now I'm pretty sure now I speak a little bit of French but uh, I, I'm gonna try I think I, I can't decide how this is pronounced I think it's Rolo, but I'm not sure anyway it's Rolo. it says it's a curved triangle with a constant width uh, so it looks like this you've basically got an equilateral triangle so where the three sides constant shape and then you've got an arc around like this and what is the what is the point of it apparently um they're, they're they're useful for um um manhole covers so that they don't fall through the hole um whereas if you use a circular one it can fall through and so if you but it but but this uh won't fall through or something like that yeah uh, apparently they also use them for guitar picks anyway interesting Hey, we learned a little bit. That's good stuff. I appreciate that, Walton. Oh, look, I think uh, I think from there. Actually, my can... apologies. Sorry. The circle, the circular shape can uh, won't fall through the hole, and this won't. But all up, like basically all other ones will. And so, if you, if you want something that's not circular for your manhole cover, you can have a a, a rouleau triangle shaped manhole cover. But like, you certainly will have seen the shape from a, like a plectrum. I think for a, for a guitar. Yeah, definitely the guitar pick. That that's 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 where I recognize it. But um, yeah, we're not here to. Even though like we love the we love the intricacies of uh, of geometry, we are going to dive into our fireside chat with Fumble. So Fumble, what's happening? What is happening? Um, well, I'm um, enjoying the rainy weather in London, and. Um... Uh, this is the city that I live in now, and I've been running a meetup group here for about a year. Um, so yeah, yeah, been been quite busy with that lately. All right, well, let's. How did let's... that begin? Yeah. Uh, so um, I actually didn't start. Um, it's called London Bitcoin Space. I didn't actually start it myself. I, um, a guy called a uh, um, his Twitter handle is uh, Captain Asta, and he came along and he he just uh, tweeted it uh, that he was. We're meeting in the pub 
got together with him and straight away I said, you know, I want to want to be involved. I want to uh, kind of kind of lead this, uh, uh, not necessarily lead this. Uh, uh, it's quite against my personality to be, to be a leader necessarily, but just I want to be involved. I felt engaged uh, to be involved because for most of my Bitcoin uh um story um i've not known any bitcoiners so all, all that all that kind of need to kind of connect with other bitcoiners is kind of built up over time and uh and so i felt very motivated and and since since then um Astor, as i call him he's he's kind of uh, moved away to different projects so i'm i'm uh, uh leading it um uh, myself but originally it was started in uh the old Bank of England pub, which used to be part of the Bank of England, and it's uh, on Fleet Street in London, right opposite the like the law courts. So, where Julian Assange kind of had his uh, kind of trials and things. Um, Just to be clear, the Bank of England is not like Bank of America. Bank of England is like the Federal Reserve. Yes, exactly. Um, and so, in this pub, it's a very nice pub. You know, they have lots of uh, banking uh, historical kind of artifacts, and you know, weighing weighing machines and it's so like scales and you know all kinds of uh uh you know various kind of uh things to um you know relate to that 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 history um but i really wanted to move it away from that i wanted to move it to um a venue where we could have um where we could pay in bitcoin because it felt like uh, there's also been this push in the uk to onboard merchants as as much as possible and i felt like well to me, at minimum, it should make sense to, um, you know, find a meetup venue, support that venue, get them on board with Bitcoin. Fumble. And, what I want to know is, like, yeah. how did you persuade them to do thirty percent discount? I didn't. It was his like because that's that's really fucking cool. Like, I so I went along to the last the last one. I'm going to go again. Uh, the next one. The next one is on. Uh, well, it, this so this episode comes out on a Monday. It it'll be, officially it'll be tomorrow. By the time yes. this episode comes out, uh, in 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 London near London Bridge, uh, but um, I don't know I forgot the point that I was making. The the yeah, so you got a discount. You got a thirty percent discount. Um, how? Yes, I, I don't normally want to spend Bitcoin. I'd rather put something on a credit card if it's going to be the same price mm -hmm. because I can you know I'm d delaying the actual having to settle that right essentially. Whereas with Bitcoin, you choosing to settle now? Um, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to pretend. I'd like to pretend that it was like some stroke of genius negotiating skills that I have. But um, really, the the the, the venue owner, uh, his name's James. He's actually got his own Bitcoin uh, project called the History of Bitcoin .io. I think it's a, some kind of art uh, art project that looks pretty good. I've, I've seen some of his work. Anyway, I won't go on that tangent just yet. But it's definitely worth uh, worth checking out. Um, he actually reached out to me on Orange Pill app um, and said, "Hey, you looking for a venue?" And uh, um, you know, so we kind of hooked it up. And he, he's been a Bitcoiner for a long time, but he's tried to, you know, so he runs this. It's called the London Bridge Rooftop Bar, and uh, they tried to implement light. Uh, I don't know if it was Lightning. I think it was quite early in maybe 2019. So I don't think things were kind of ready as they are now. Um, and and so it was kind of a failure for him. And so this time I said, look, if you if you want people to be spending Bitcoin um, uh, and, and from my point of view, like whether people spend or don't spend, it's nice incentive to learn how to use a wallet. You know, so at first, we, you know, he suggested, OK, we'll do the first, say, 21 pints of beer uh, are 21 sats or something just so that you have uh you know a habit of okay now i have a justification to uh, mo um uh, incentive to download a wallet you know uh, receive 21 sats from somebody who can just happily give it to, uh, i was giving 21 sats to people left right and center uh, so they could do it and i thought okay well that's not really sustainable and i said if you want people doing it long term you need a discount i simply just mentioned a discount james was very uh, uh generous and saying, okay, 30%. And 30% is enough to, <laughs> it's more than enough uh, to uh, incentivize people to work out how do I get get a wallet on my phone? How do I get sats? How do I receive sats? How do I spend sats? And, um, you know, even if they never use it to spend their sats in a, all on beer in a, in a bar, uh, 
you know it's it's opening that door for people to be able to transact between each other from, from pleb to pleb you know that's what peer-to-peer -peer maybe should be changed to pleb to pleb to pleb so you know you, you can then when once you have a wallet do you open that door to you know you go go somewhere with a friend they they pay the bill you split it you pay in sats you know i do do all the time with with people and then it becomes a race actually Especially international yeah and, and then it became it becomes a race it's like no no, no I'll, I'll pay i'll settle on fiat so that you can then pay me kyc sats uh, free sats kyc free, free yeah. sats yeah so um so that's that's how we got the the discount it wasn't really my doing it's a suggestion and he uh, uh is just a very generous guy so very lucky yeah, I think that's man. That is absolutely fantastic, uh, and I think it's very cool that that you you hold a meetup. Um, I, I've I've been approached a few times to start a meetup, and uh, I just you know for me, I I rather just you know this is the path I'm taking, you know, creating content uh, instead. But um, in terms of the meetup, Tumble's meetup was the first one I ever went to. Oh, very cool! That's like awesome. as, a, as a kind of local meetup, right? Like I've been, I went to, I went to Miami twice. I went to Bitcoin Beach Retreat, but I, ne I never went to like a sort of. I mean, I'm not that close, but a, a, you know, a, 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 you know, a more regular meetup, right? Um, uh, Fumble does it. Fumble does a very good meetup. Um, yeah, thank you. So, so Fumble, yeah. tell, tell me. I mean, not that I have any comparison, I guess, really. But like, in terms of, in <laughs> I'll, terms of like, I'll take it. It, it no, wasn't no, just like, no, no, just yeah, Walton. Right there, I'll take it as a compliment. It wasn't exclusively like, <laughs> like awkward IT guys like standing around, like, um, you know, there were women exclusively that. There, there were women there. What? I yeah, think there, were, there were multiple women there. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, we, I, we. I mean, well, they at least appeared like they were. I mean, I, you know, they could be spooks, right? <laughs> yeah, just a just a trap for you. So what I'm what I'm interested in um, in terms of these meetups is what has been what has been your biggest challenge with, I guess, holding these meetups and organizing these meetups. Hmm. Good question. Biggest challenge. Um, could be anything. Could be location. Could be you know um, questions that people ask. It could be anything. Like what's you know like. I, I just, I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, well, I guess on, on one level, it was actually like finding, finding the venue that, um, that we could support as Bitcoiners. So that's, that was a big part, but most of that work was taken, taken uh, away from me. And, uh, luckily, I guess the other part is just trying to make it as approachable as possible. And I, I have, I'm, I'm quite proud to, to say that I have had that as a compliment that I, so how do you, you know, do that? Uh, I guess I guess just uh, I, I try to be like an attentive host, and when people arrive and I don't know them, you know, I, I run through, you know, like, uh, you know, how did you even find out about us, you know, and like what, where, you, where are you coming from in terms of like you know, your knowledge base, or you know, what, what do you even want out of meetups and things like that. So, trying to get a sense of what they actually want, so that I can actually tailor it to them, but also so that I can uh, work out who the who the really new people are that maybe would be a bit too shy to ask what they are going to think are dumb questions. Um, so that, um, that there's just that capacity for a bit more handholding and making sure that they, they feel welcome and not just kind of lost in really overly technical, uh, you know, conversation that's going over their head. To me, the only stupid questions are disingenuous ones. Like if you're, if you're yeah. trying to learn, then it can't really be a stupid question. Yeah, right. it might I be a, you know an uninformed one. Like, mate, you know, maybe you need to. I totally agree. You know, learn a bit more before you kind of really ask the question that you want to ask. Ask and like, and sometimes that's that's challenging for people. But yeah, if if they're really trying to learn, I don't think there's I don't think there's such thing as that. Maybe well, maybe not. Maybe stupid questions are the wrong word. You can have a stupid question, but there aren't there aren't really. <laughs> I they think should, that, I think they, the, they should uh, all be they should all be asked and answered unless they're disingenuous. Abs, abs, absolutely, and I think the the way I, the reason I frame it like that is that I've, I've come across a lot of this mentality of people who I know are f perfectly able to grapple with some of the you know Bitcoin education and like learn stuff. You know, you don't have to be a, a genius to understand uh, a lot of this stuff. Um, and I think a lot of people put the um they're their own worst enemies you know they they make it difficult they they shut down i've i've met people who will say like oh no i'm not smart enough for that kind of thing and they just shut down instantly and then don't attempt and so i think I'm, in a way i'm kind of 
trying to address that feeling of just like people think that they're dumb so to frame it around like even if it's a super dumb question like we're here for it and it's actually often smarter and more uh uh observant than uh, somebody that's been in bitcoin for a long time some of those really newbie questions are actually like they cut right through some of the nonsense because it's starting from you know uh, starting from scratch so they can ask quite profound questions without really meaning to and and it's actually like you know all the veteran bitcoiners in the room are like oh yeah that's actually a really good question <laughs> trying to and then challenges us to articulate uh you know how we'd even address some of these questions so so it's probably the biggest challenge but it's it's rewarding not just for those newbie people that need to feel welcome but also um it gets us to kind of get better at explaining things and reframing uh for uh different listeners um you know just stuff that when we're in the source of it you know we're, we're used to all these um more technical ways of framing things and it's nice to actually just get down to basics a bit so let me ask you also this because this has kind of been one of the uh <laughs> one of the, th you know, one of the things that, that sticks out in my mind with meetups. So you don't get noobs or, or you don't get new people all the time necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that when you do, it's almost like you have to start from scratch with those people. So like, is there like a general FAQ or something that you hand out to them? Because otherwise I feel like if you want your meetups to progress, uh, right, then you know, uh, or go more in depth, then you kind of have to follow some, you know, some logical, you know, some logical framework. And every time there's a noob, you know, that joins, you want them to learn and you want them to, um, you know, like uh, you want them to become part of the group, but at the same time, you also don't want to make people who have been there, you know, kind of lose interest in essentially having to rehash the old information. So how do you handle, I guess, moving ahead, but also at the same time, um you know kind of keeping the noobs afloat as they come in like is that even mm -hmm. is that a challenge so as someone who wasn't a noob who went along to the last one like i i saw it as just more of a social and then and then i you know i dipped in and out of the talks and then i tried to contribute the odd the odd bit like the you know ben ark was there d doing a talk on nostra um and i was able to contribute a little bit but because because i know a little bit about Nost, but from you know different different people, and so the, the because things are you know moving so fast, even people who are kind of in a particular arena developing things don't know everything in that arena because there's just it's going so fast. Um, yeah, and so I think yeah, I think, yeah it, I, I, it, you it, you flip. There's there's a good memes with the who is it, but like. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Splinter and like the relative sizes about like and it's like oh, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about they're like um, and that same sort of thing happens right you have the the kind of passing down of the uh, education um, yeah like once you once you kind of learn a bit then then you're in some sort of I don't know you're 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 probably going to try and contribute even if you're not the kind of main presenter um, mm. and I think it's these kind of spaces are more like that yeah okay there's there's talks but they're you can you can they're they're a bit they're not quite round table right but they they are meant to be i think a bit more open and and, and for they are meant to be a bit more um discursive yeah and like the format of my meetups are very they're very casual they're you know so what you saw we don't normally have like two two talks in in one night um that was that was quite a, a special special thing but uh you know sometimes we'll have like a group group discussion sometimes we'll we'll, we'll uh you know have just a, a pleb from the meetup want to want to present something um but in terms of the noob question i'd say like so to be honest i'd say it's rare for us to get like proper proper starting from scratch noobs i think if you go to a bitcoin meetup you're probably more like like it's going to be on your radar therefore you're kind of to some extent going to be engaged a little bit with the space um so i'd say generally i don't think i've had a, maybe one person who's come and they're really starting from scratch uh, everyone else has maybe like a some basic grounding but are very uh inexperienced and I would say like 
the 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 group, the regulars, everyone who comes. I'm actually like very proud and and uh, uh, of the of the group. We have a really helpful uh, group of people. I'm not the most technical Bitcoiner, and uh, you know there are people that are there that um, can really jump in with those uh, more technical aspects. Um, but I think we 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 all want to help. Nick Gregory is a regular, right? Yeah, Nick Gregory is a reg regular now. Um, there's a there's a few few others. I'm not not sure if um, they want to be named, but um, uh, there's some there's some serious knowledge there. Um, and we were lucky because there were some existing groups in London before I started, um, before we started the uh, London Bitcoin space. That there's a wealth of knowledge already in London. It's just kind of like joining it up and maybe putting it in an environment where uh, it's like you say, it's a bit more social. Sometimes we're just kind of hanging out and talking, and um, you know that is approachable for whether you know a lot or a little. And um, as I say, because everyone wants to help new people and explain stuff it doesn't really like bore the 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 veteran bitcoiners because they have something to learn even if it's just being challenged of how to explain something that we kind of take for granted because we get it uh, so we don't necessarily even practice trying to explain this stuff so i think it's mutual learning it's not it's not just boring it's not boring for the noobs being being uh bombarded with you know really technical conversations and it's not you know the more technical people being bored by the mundane noob questions there's there's a nice kind of um um uh um what, what's it what's the word like a um it's kind of mutually beneficial um that we're both getting something out of it and it keeps everyone happy i think the balance seems to to, to work out I really like that, man. And and I appreciate your uh, your perspective on it. Uh, and I, I didn't, yeah, you know, like, I mean, you're absolutely right about somebody already having a certain amount of exposure to the space, you know, before they before they end up at a, a Bitcoin meetup. So so let me ask you this. Um, do you guys have like a do you have a, a website or something like how can people find out when the next meetup is and everything like that? Um, so I haven't got a website yet. Uh, I need to, need to get on that. Um, I, so it's mainly, mainly starts on Twitter and, and, and stays on Twitter. It's probably the easiest place to point to. So, um, I put my Twitter handle in my, uh, name here. So it's at London BTC space. Um, I will always tweet, uh, and pin the tweet when there's a, a an event up, but generally it's, every two weeks on a Tuesday at London bridge. And I also started uh, running another group in, in uh, another part of London, South London once a month in Brixton. But um, if you go there, so I would say uh, London BTC space on Twitter, or I'd really encourage anyone, especially like UK listeners, um, Bitcoin events, UK on Twitter, or it's actually Bitcoin events. UK as a website is where all the meetup, uh, Sorry, the, basically the the guy guy Sai, um, his name is uh, Hoddle Solo on Twitter. He created. I think a lot of us were were, were quite. Um, I don't know what the word is. Bitter, <laughs> jealous uh, that the American scene was so big, and that we felt really like it was lacking in the UK. And we just thought like, why, why, why don't we have all this all this shit? Why don't we have all the um, the, the engagement that they seem to have in America. Um, it's because it's because we haven't tried hard enough to make Bitcoin sexy again in the UK. But Fumble's doing his part, right? Fumble's Fumble's organizing the the meetup on a on a rooftop bar with beautiful sunset views, ladies. So, uh, you know, <laughs> come along um, and Fumble will buy you a drink. It's true. I will. I like that. <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, look, we're we've added. Um, we're gonna add the. Uh, those contact details to the show notes and guys this this wraps up our fireside chat with fumble and we are going to move it on over to wrecked wrecked is brought to you by crypto cloaks check them out cryptocloaks.com awesome 3d prints made by fellow bitcoiners such as the ever popular 3D printed grenade. That's right. You could store two open dimes in there. You can also order the bigger 
3D printed grenade and store a full hardware wallet slash signing device. Check them out, CryptoCloaks.com. Don't forget to use the code PLEB Underground for 5% off and look for our affiliate link in the show notes. That's CryptoCloaks.com and PLEB Underground is the code for 5% off. All right, guys, before we uh, before we dive into Rekt, I just want to give a shout out to uh, to some fellow plebs. I um, want to give a shout out to Sir Ulrich and Extemos. Uh, Extemos sent us like a, uh, and Sir Ulrich sent us like a little care package with uh, some pleb underground branded mugs. And Sir Ulrich made this really cool declaration of monetary independence. So anyways, very cool stuff, guys. Thank you so much, Walton. I'm going to be sending yours because they sent yours to me. So guys, we, we really appreciate it and totally humbled by the love. Thank you so much. All right, guys, for the fail, we've got a couple of things. All right. And we are going to start off with that's right, guys, this this Greta Thunberg video. Granted, I, I don't know if I don't know if this is just like a troll video. Somebody somebody said that that she was taken out of context. But look, out of context or not. Talking about saving the banks is talking about saving the banks. I, I don't care. I, I don't care what the context is. But anyways, let's let's dive into this this video that was a shared by Bitcoin Bum. Here we go. The money is there. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. <laughs> I mean, the money what? is there. Yeah, that's right. If we can save the banks, we can save the world. That's right. Okay. Well, before we get into the, uh, before we start going into the main part of uh, this week's fail, uh, so look, um, for anybody who's keeping track, who anybody who, who's who's keeping track, um, listening to Greta Thunberg really screwed Germany over um, last winter. That that's that's first of all, but second of all, it's this right. We Europe, have no, hold Europe, on, hold on. Phil, the whole of Europe, it, like like Germany's energy. Well, Germany decisions complained the most. Don't just affect Germany. <laughs> Germany complained the most. <laughs> But but you're right. But I just I'm sorry. I just want to point this one thing out here before I get your your comments on this. Um, we we talk about critical thinking, right? We we talk about like not trusting scientists and and actually looking at the research, and then we have nations that are listening to a a child, a child that doesn't know any better, that clearly hasn't done any of the research. Who, you know, less than at that point, you know, who less than 15 years ago was a blank slate. A blank slate that didn't know anything. So this is kind of weird that we are existing in this time where we're supposed to trust scientists and listen to children about apparently saving the banks to save the world because the money is there. So obviously she doesn't understand money. I mean, that that's number one. And not that I'm expecting her to, because guess what? Uh, when I was that age, I didn't understand money either. Anyways, I, I just think it's it, it it it's hypocritical of us as as so, humans. I have one theory though. The the, yeah. the 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 banks and other big corporates very much adopted um ESG, right? Um and have been Yes. Um I would argue kind of the biggest the biggest pushers of it, right? In terms of th if you work at these places, they, you know, they have to do like, oh, go do a day on, on, on the, you know, on this new woke shit or whatever. Like they, they, they have to do these, um, what's the term? Like the, like the, uh, institutional brainwashing courses on, on ESG, uh, that are part of their, you know, uh, continued professional development or, or whatever bullshit terms they, they call it. Right. Um, and so actually, when she says if we can save the banks, we can save the world, maybe what she means is if we can save corporate pushes of ESG, then we can push ESG, and that's the point. I think that's a good interpretation. Fumble, what are your, uh, did you, I mean, did you see this video? What are your thoughts? I, I did see it. I do also think this taken out of context. For the <laughs> way I read it, the way I read it is uh, that she said, no, I'm not a particular fan of of Greta. I, I consider her maybe like um uh like a useful idiot in terms of yes. um kind of what what Walton was saying. Like it's, there's an agenda that it it serves for people. She reminds me of um I think it's Malala Yousaf, you know the Afghan girl who's always doing talks at the UN. 
like she, she it was a nice story it was a nice uh, not nice but like it was a it was a narrative yeah it's a very not nice story but it's not but like it, representative of something much bigger or but but it was it was a narrative to be able to um uh, you know give justification for intervention in afghanistan based on like save the women so it served it served like a kind of ideological point um i don't think she's been particularly helpful i think i think in general although i'm you know you know um on the left and uh, belief if that's the the word in climate change um she this kind of ideology of trying to undermine uh fossil fuel use when there isn't an alternative set up uh adequately i think has already been proved really dangerous and uh, yeah harmful in in europe um the way i see it as she's taken out uh, it's been taken out of context is I see it as she's saying, um, if we have the money to save the banks, we can save the climate, which is saying, if we can mm -hmm. print all this money and bail out, bail, bailing out these failing systems, I don't think she's saying that's fantastic and we should do it. I think she's saying, if we've got the money for this, we've got the money for that. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, if you have no problem with uh, you know, spending X amount of money to bail, to bail out bankers, then surely these policies, you know, whatever she's thinking or the policies... She's saying, uh, if we I'll can work. save the banks, we can save the world instead. Is 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 more the point rather than we should do one to do the other? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I think it's being framed like she's saying that we need to save the banks in order to save the planet. But I think it's I think it's just she's just saying like, if there's money, and you're spending it on that, then then there's money. There is a she's some magic had bad intonation, and so that's why it's pretty confusing. Yeah, yeah. I think it the the content. I mean, I'm sure that if anyone posted like the the fuller clip that would be uh, apparent what she's saying but um, we only see this clip because i yeah. think these things get the engagement uh they get the kind of the the outrage engagement as well and and uh yeah it's, it's, and it and it's triggering for bitcoiners <laughs> yeah yeah it definitely is i mean for me it, it was just the matter of it was just a matter of, oh, gosh, you know, like she's had such terrible messaging in the past. And now this is more further terrible messaging that that to me like that. That's all it was, you know, like it was just a it was just like a continuation of the terrible messaging and going back to this whole. Why are we listening to children like it, it's, you know, already there's enough adults running around that don't know what they don't know. I mean, the the epitome of ignorance and, and then, you know, we, we've got essentially you know, media outlets that are propping, you know, these, these types of people up, um, that really, really have, have no business talking about any of this stuff. Yeah. Look, look at how she's used in terms of the, like, the, you know, you see, we don't see the, except on Twitter, maybe we don't see like the brutality of the police, uh, in these French protests, but we see, yeah, wall to wall, these, these, uh, uh, cover to cover these, um, these shots of of her just standing with a smiling on her face, getting arrested at some some demo. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that video as well. I, I saw. Did, did you see the the whole video where they like you could see the staging and everything? No, I didn't. I didn't see it. No. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of interesting. They somebody and again, right? I I take this stuff all with a grain of salt um, mm -hmm. because you, you know at this point like how technology works. But essentially, they 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 showed. Um, that they were preparing to, you know, do the video and to make it seem like she was being arrested and taken away. Um, but again, right, again, uh, you know, perception is reality. So is it truth? I don't know that it's necessarily truth, but perception is reality. Anyways, anyways, um, look, at this point, at this point, the advice that she gave about fossil fuels was completely was completely wrong. Um, it was wrong even when she gave it. And there are many studies that show, um, how all of these, uh, how all of the energy technologies are cumulative. So we, it's, it's like, we can't get to using the next one efficiently if we haven't had all of these others, meaning that we have no choice, but to continue to leverage fossil fuels. So anyways, anyways, all right, we are going to move on to the major part of the fail. Here we go. We discussed um, Hex and Richard Hart in a clip this week, and I figured, you know what, I we're going to discuss it on the fail, uh, sorry, on Wrecked as well. 
And the reason why we're going to discuss it on Wrecked is because some of these, I just find it fascinating that people are willing to put, in some cases, their life savings into something that is clearly, clearly a scam and yet not do any research into who Richard is. Okay. It's kind of wild it hasn't happened. This has taken so long. Like, just, to me, to me, that guy that it sets up a bullshit, like, a detector, like, like, times a million. It's like, you'd have to be, like, I don't know, like, actually blind and, I don't know, and, like, have severe... I don't know, psychological, emotional issues to kind of latch on to this guy. Like, what? what is wrong with you? I man, absolutely. Okay, let's and let's dive into it because this is this is kind of funny. This is more a story of like wrecked hexagons. Okay, so here's a tweet from Summer from Summer's Things. Uh, Richard Hart, right, is sued by the SEC for securities fraud. Okay, so we've all seen this one. All right, so then, so this is good. So, um, anyways, Mac B, fellow Bitcoiner, all right, takes the screenshot of uh, Mason Verslius, which yeah, I just destroyed that last name, but it makes no difference. This tweet, but this is what's funny about this tweet. Okay, so Lil Hexaco responds back and goes, "Bro, this is fake. You should be ashamed for posting stuff like this, bro. It's embarrassing." So th this is very interesting, right? Because y y you'll notice, right? It says it says Richard J. Schuler. Okay, and and this is what's funny because the hexagons don't know. There's a lot of hexagons that either pretend they don't know or don't know that <laughs> Richard Hart's real name is is Richard Schuler. So, yeah, so anyways, so Richie responds to Lil Hexaco's tweet, which is now deleted, okay? And he provides the actual SEC link, which we have here, which we'll also put in the show notes. And here is the link from the sec.gov website, uh, specifically saying, Hex founder Richard Hart. This is, this is why I chose it for Rekt, because, guys, if you are going to put um, any any amount of your value, okay, right? Any amount of your money that you've saved into these shit coins, you need to do your research. I mean, obviously, you shouldn't be putting any money into shit coins, but some of these people, right, that have been shilling this absolute dog crap to you um, and have been buying it themselves don't even know Richard's past, okay? They have no idea what his real name even was. So it's it's just really, really cringe that these guys, they're wrecking other people and and on top of that, they're wrecking themselves in the process. And throughout this week, I have seen so much cope uh, from, from Hex Bag Holders. I saw, I saw another account that has over like 100,000 followers and she was explaining that that essentially they've beat the FUD and this is the best dip that like, this is the best opportunity that they're ever going to get to buy the dip guys. Um, there's a video, which I showed in, in the, the hex clip that I did, which essentially shows Richard Hart explaining how the numbers for hex don't make any sense at all. And they're completely unreasonable, but the chart shows it's going there. I mean, look, Guys, this is not this is not what you think it is. This is not a buying opportunity. I understand it's very different. It's very difficult to convince somebody out of believing that they have been scammed, but I do find it to be one of the most fruitful exercises that you can do. So, if you're really, you know, if you are a hex bag holder and you're totally freaking out being triggered, you know, watching this, you should really dive into it and just even do some simple math and see how it's completely unfeasible. Okay. I've never seen someone buy like luxury goods at a rate and like publish it at the rate that he does. Like if, if it's, it's because it's well known that like criminals actually store their wealth in luxury goods because like, like Rolex is in this sort of thing. Like, um, and he's and he's literally literally doing this. But I don't know why. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure he's got a bunch of Bitcoin as well. The Bitcoin that I mean, did they? I don't know what they, did they sell it for Bitcoin or Ethereum? He pretty he pretty he pretty accepted Ethereum and then bought Bitcoin with Ethereum, whatever it is. But yeah, like the the guy, it's so fucking obvious. He's spending all of the money right in front of you and waving it around. It's like it's like there was a couple couple of years ago. There was this rapper that I think confessed to a murder in one of his songs and then got busted 
for you know for that crime and what was wild is richard apparently is now he put out this movie right we talked about this last last week that yep. he's put out, putting out a movie where someone's investigating whether he's a scammer but he is so why is he I, i'm super confused as to what he's he like wait i just gotta try and print some more money right quickly quick 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 print some more and that seems what it is it's just print and spend print and spend that's shit coiners print and spend uh, you know Wait. that's exactly it. Oh, fumble, go ahead. So, sorry, what, did you say that he's behind that film? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm just completely astounded by that. Like that, it's actually his. It's his kind of like I don't know. I think he's he thinks he's making Wolf of Wall Street sort of thing. I'm guessing. I'm not quite sure. I think he probably heard that there was going to be. Wasn't there going to be a film about Sam Bankman Freed? Um, oh yeah, the, the the like that OC wanker or whatever was was going to do it or write it, but I don't know. Like well, but so Rick, yeah, again, it's he's just trying to print money. I get, again, I don't know how much does this guy got? Has he got enough that he can kind of buy freedom in some country? Well, I I, I heard somebody say I heard somebody say that maybe he's up there with the uh, SBF and uh, um CZ, you know, like uh, in terms of, of the amount of money behind the scenes that he's, he's kind of generated maybe maybe not but um he seems to have gone for a long time uh i was gonna say under the radar even though he's like basically like sh- literally shaking his ass in your face um, i'm talking more like look at look at justin's son mm. i think i mean justin's son who 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 i think bought citizenship and then became like ambassador of some caribbean island yeah. like um look at look at max kaiser the new duke of el salvador like the shitcoiners buy um or you know billionaires in general have to essentially buy protection from countries so at some point you are you are a certain size that you 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 have assets that do need actual protection and so they 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 i don't know work out some sort of partnership with a with a country i'm gonna bring money and you look after me um this has happened forever i why countries uh, exist i actually think um i actually think that hex is going to be the low-hanging fruit that the sec uses to start dismantling um a good portion of crypto because so there were letters that went out um, from hex hex.com right indicating 38 percent returns uh, specifying uh, an investment right an investment opportunity uh, this went out for both hex and pulse chain so th- there's that aspect of it number one number two there is the uh, what's it called there's there's the rage marketing um, and and the the other the other piece to this is is that there is a video out there um an interview that richard did with ivan on tech where he specifically explains how he got wrecked and how he saw everyone else how he saw his quote unquote friends or colleagues getting rich around him while he wasn't and he at that moment decided to enrich himself by making his own shitcoin so don't get me wrong, but like his his narcissism is most likely what's going to do him in. Um, you know, he, he it's that to me like that is what's going to happen. The last piece I want to say about it is this: um, it, it is that I have yet to see somebody um, who's not a scammer um, present their lives the way that Richard presents his. Um, I, I just, I, I'm sorry, but you know, it's, I, I grew up with, I did, I've said this before. I even said this in the clip. Like I grew up with a lot of scammers, different types of scammers, like especially telemarketing scammers. And let me tell you these, the people that earn a shitload of money by doing absolutely nothing, like when they don't provide any value, these are the people that are the first ones to show you just because they're so fucking empty inside. There's just nothing to this person. They're just shallow and depraved and all they can do is show you this useless crap that they've bought. It's marketing, Phil. It's, it is. It I is am marketing. successful. You it too is. can be successful but, if you give me some money. It's one of the oldest scams in the book. It is, but my point is, is that, so there's different ways of marketing things, right? Like when you actually provide value to people, whereas somebody goes and sees, um, you know, sees a product or service that you're offering, you don't need flash because your product, 
right? Your product speaks for itself. So yes, indeed, you can you, you can use some puffy language to bring somebody in through the door, but then the mark, but then the product or service speaks for itself. In this case, there is, as you know, nothing else. There only is the marketing. There is nothing in the background. So yeah, but Phil, let me just show you. Apparently, yeah. apparently. Hex is not a scam. If you go on, if you go on hex.com, you too can find out. Hex is not a scam. It's such a, it's such a scam. They have to have a page on the website saying why it's not a scam. And apparently, it's not only it's not a scam, it starves scams of resources. So, you know. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> nice. Because you guys can't read, so of course, that you know, yeah. It's not a scam. It's not a scam. All right, but guys, it is a scam. <laughs> it is a scam. <laughs> Anyways, that wraps up. That wraps up wrecked. And we are gonna move on over to the Hopium. Hopium. Up next, we have Hopium, sponsored by Represent. Represent are a Bitcoin-owned clothing brand based out on the west coast of the United States. If you go to Represent ltd.com you can find a whole selection of goods apparel accessories etc shirts that look almost as cool as this and many other things uh and if you use the code pleb underground you get a discount on all of the goodies once again that's represent ltd.com so i'm first on hopium um uh, is actually i guess a similar story to phil's which is all these uh you know all the shitcoin is getting wrecked by regulation right if you if you if you have things that aren't properly decentralized that are um you know passing howie tests uh you, you're in a lot of trouble um and it's not just the you know the holders of these tokens or the people who are, you know founded it and released it and all this sort of thing um actually it's it's also you know the the influencers um that are that are going to get in trouble and i actually think that's quite a good thing um let's let's have a little look at um uh a little a little clip from some crypto ho um there we go here we go here we go here i already go. know who you're gonna bring <laughs> i already yeah, know <laughs> let's... go on t tell us now fumble who's it gonna uh, be Leia. oh no you're, cl you're close you're close <sighs> uh it's wendy o so let's have a look what is what does she have to say here and I'm also considering relocating as well, because if I can't work here in the U.S., if I can't do my crypto stuff, then what am I going to do? That's no fun. And also, I like to be able to be a content creator. And I don't know if I could do that in the U.S. anymore because we don't have any clear types of guidelines. So um, apparently there's no clear types of guidelines on on being a scammer. I think I think. Is it okay to scam I think, all then? I think what she means is that like um, na now the language is starting to indicate I might get in trouble, and so I'm going to flee uh, to Dubai with all of the other crypto influencers um, and enjoy the the lack of capital gains there, um, and and I think maybe also lack of extradition to the United States, something we discussed on a previous episode. Um, yeah, but it's good, right? Because you get rid of you get rid of these. Uh, influencers uh they 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 leave they leave your countries um and they you know they they go off and i don't know get us get a compound in romania or something right i think you know it's interesting right because i've seen that clip a few times at this point and i i don't know i i have this feeling right like i i, I get i get this feeling when i watch this where i'm just like why are you LARPing? Like, why are you pretending that you're going to go and move to another? Like, she's not going anywhere. Okay. She's not, she's not going anywhere, dude. Okay. She's just sitting here LARPing and crying about the fact that what you just said, right? They are having clarity. Clarity is coming. And what she's seeing is her scamming career coming to an end. Her and Grift Boy and all of these other people. And, and I just want to point out, okay? Some of the some of the stuff that these gr the, these grifters get you with, okay, they pull on your, your your heartstrings. And I remember when I first got into it got into this space, and I found Wendy O's account, 
Okay. And I remember I'd watch some of her videos, you know, and, and, and it's always, I noticed it's the same thing from a lot of these shitcoin grifters, right? Um, ex drug addicts. And again, I'm not judging somebody for that stuff. I'm just saying it's, it seems to be the same story. It's ex drug addicts. They've cleaned their life up and now here they are shilling you dog shit. Okay. And her story of course is, you know, the single mother aspect. So it's even more pulling on the heartstrings. And again, I am not indicating in any way, shape or form that that is not difficult or a struggle or anything like that. But then it also begs the question, why would you become a fucking scammer when you know how hard life can be? And you know that people can't afford to lose what little they have. And yet somehow you've mind fucked yourself into thinking that you're providing a worthwhile service when really you're just a grifter with a sob story that's luring in simps and noobs. All right, Phil, uh, maybe, maybe this is a, I've got an idea right. here. <laughs> if, 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 you're a, if you're a desperate single mother um, with, with no real skills, um, should, should you should you a become a scammer um and exploit other people but may but maybe like not not be that bad a mother as or should you be an only fans like ho and be a terrible like i mean i guess they're both not great role models but i think if you're it's, that certainly would not be a great role model but maybe that's a bit more of an honest service um terrible but uh well you know if 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 you were a single mother phil are you choosing to be if you, and, and the only two choices you have are only fans ho or crypto influencer which one are you choosing i mean dude it's like you set the bar in the dumpster juice but i i, I think unfortunately we are talking about wendy here phil <laughs> <laughs> look man i i think unfortunately I, i'd have to go with the only fans <laughs> I, hey, look, man. You know, it, it's when you set the when you set the bar that low at the very already least, got the green screen. That's right. We already got the green screen. <laughs> All I got to do is change up the mic, as Avery indicated. Right, we get the fancy little mic so it doesn't cover up my face. You know, maybe I can get some more OnlyFans dollars now. But look, I I just it it, it really is pathetic. Um, I know that we can also say it kind of has to do with the fiat incentives. Um, but fumble. I, I'd really like to know. I think we'd like to to know your thoughts. Um, I mean, when you first got in, you and I were talking, you know, we were all talking about this before, right? In 2017, when were you introduced? Did you ever, you know, when did you find out about Wendy O? Um, I, I actually just learned her name from this uh, from this oh. conversation. I, I recognize her face. I've seen her, I've seen her talk, uh, speak Wait, before. Wait, it's not Wendy Ho? <laughs> the, the H is silent, Walton. <laughs> um, but, but like I... You know, I, I definitely had my shitcoin phase, but like I, I didn't really. Uh, I felt like she was, however, like, uh, like not credible. The people I were following were. Um, the, I never went that far. Like Wendy, Wendy is like beyond beyond that line. So I never really got found found someone like Wendy. Uh, I only found out about Leia because somebody told me about her. Uh, cause they thought that she was hot and that was about it. <laughs> um, terrible. She's, she's really falling off. Like let me see a recent picture. I mean, she was never like hot, but like she's, she's falling off fast. Um, and Didn't she, like, show she, the was, in fact, she was the first person I was ever blocked by on, on Bitcoin Twitter. And I'm proud of it because it was as late as December, 2021 that she was shilling doge. So like, yeah. Didn't she also shill hex? And then, and then she introduced. She had. Her, to, she's like, "Hey yeah. guys, welcome my brother to Twitter." I'm like, "So he oh, can see yeah. what a shitcoining influencer you are as well." That's why I got blocked. Fair enough. But like, she is a shitcoining influencer, and she does. She does. What's funny is she she pretends to do like half of pretends to do this like trad kind of trad girl trad wife bullshit, whilst also selling a book called Undressing Bitcoin. Uh, and now she's doing like what like Dragon's Den or what are they, what do they call it in America, Phil? They're like um, uh, shark. Tank. Shark, shark tank shark shark tank but for for, for shit coins like they're, they're calling it so we did believe it or not walton we did a clip about this on pleb underground and it's called the uh the next crypto scam but her the, the show is actually called the next crypto gem and it's so funny because <laughs> it's literally all of the shit coins that they are marketing so the people Wait, did you say are... gem or jam as in like jam a way to preserve your wealth is in is in a preserve like jam <laughs> it's gem like g-e-m <laughs> 
but but dude it's so cringe and essentially what they're doing is they're shilling so they are a marketing company if you go look at the other judges they are like shitcoin marketers and they're essentially marketing the projects that 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 they are involved in like dude it is such a horrible grift and when you saw that commercial that commercial is so cringe so we it's like mario but on live television oh, basically yeah. it's that oh dude it's it, it's maybe brutal. not live I don't but you know on television last. crazy yeah but i do think i think what fumble talked about here though is that there's i think there are a bunch of people that that shitcoin because they 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 listen to tr traders some of whom make money but most of whom don't um and they're trying the traders are actually trying to pull in a bunch of retail to trade against right um sure. and then there are and then there is i think this this and i think it's more us this is more the case in the us than elsewhere in the world there is a kind of like crypto community kind of like uh, it, it's very much a kind of um what's the word there's the, the, there's a kind of internet culture group all around chip coinery and and stuff that i don't think exists the same you know there aren't nft uh conferences at big stadiums in the uk that i think there are in the us or there's there's the the kind of the it's a bit like yo-yos right like the, when when you were in the, in the playground as a kid right you you know one of the trends one year was was doing yo-yos right and they swing they go up and down they go up and down and then eventually they they fall apart and that's basically what shit coins do they're they're just a fad they go up and down and then they fall apart now that's not what you want you want them to go up and down and, and then and then eventually up and you know you look after you so so don't shit coin anyway up next on hopium um is some fear mongering from the msm now why is why is that hopium well i think it's hopium because as fiat world spirals with the debt the the propaganda has to get more and more extreme um and that can actually make some normies wake up a little bit more and go this is a bit ridiculous now, isn't it? And here's the most ridiculous um, I, I've ever seen. I think for so I've, you know we've all been hearing about how weather reports are getting increasingly dramatized, and they're showing the dark red. But on on German state television, apparently the largest German state television, they're now actually showing flames. Um, and I'm going to translate some of these numbers for you. So 30, 30 degrees centigrade to convert from centigrade to Fahrenheit, you times by one point eight, and then add thirty two. So thirty times one point eight is fifty four add 32 86 so we're talking like up, up, as high as 86 fahrenheit here um and they're, and, they're, and they're showing flames people in texas like they 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 in the middle of the night they're like it's it's hotter than that like come on like this is ridiculous this is ridiculous and of course the guy looks a bit like he works for the world economic forum as well maybe wakes up some normies what do we think guys yeah i so I, I think that uh i think that that is total fear mongering i think it is the complete you know just a little bit more information to help push this uh you know the the climate change narrative and you know I, I know that anybody who speaks out against it immediately comes out as a denier okay rather than a person who is just critically you know thinking about the situation um i do want to point out growing up as a kid in canada right we we also use centigrade we don't use fahrenheit and as a child it was not unusual. I know this is going to sound crazy and I'm going to sound like a denier, but hear me out. Okay. This was back in the mid eighties and in the nineties, we had weather that went up to 35 degrees centigrade during the summer when it's hot. I, I know. Phil, we actually had 40 last year here, and I think it's fantastic. It's hey, what I'm saying is bring on global warming. Like, England's going to become like the Mediterranean. Um, like, you should, if if you're not going to buy Bitcoin, you should long like English wine or something, because in over the <laughs> next 20 years, the climate is going to be fantastic. Human beings have uh, an exceptional ab ability for, for being really stupid um, while thinking that we're really smart. And... The, I think climate change is one of those things because it's this invisible boogeyman that you can tie a whole bunch of things to and, and you can essentially, with enough coercion, get enough people to just start really acting like fools. And, and again, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't have energy efficiency, but what we should be doing is looking at using more and more energy efficiently. 
not using less and less by reducing our life. Because that's really what it is. All of our incredible breakthroughs didn't happen because we were using less and less, doing less and less. It's because we've been using more and more and doing more and more. Sorry. You know, so, uh, yep, I think yeah. I should a bit. But I, I know you're you're a bit more of a climate dude, Fumble. Tell me, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, well, no, I was just going to... I was just going to... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say that, like, these kind of things, this, you know, what you're showing, the, the, the weather, the weather screen, um, it, I find it really disappointing um, because these things always destroy... Uh, the ability for people to have like nuance, nuanced discussions. Like um, earlier, Walton was saying that like Leia was the first p like, person that blocked him on on uh, Bitcoin Twitter. For me, it was safe Dina Moose, right? <laughs> and it, <laughs> and 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 it's because I I, tw I tweeted and basically said like you know could it be that you know uh, it could be both that climate change is real and the state is cynically using it to their own advantage because they don't give a shit like. Those, but two things can be true at the same time, right? And we don't always live in this kind of world that's just completely binary. So when I see that, like, I know that people, I know there's a lot of uh, people that would maybe be fooled by that um, graphic, but I also know that a significant part of the world also sees right through that and sees, you know, like, oh, I remember it was hotter last year and we didn't have those flames. Um, so it's, it, it makes us look like idiots or it makes us look like um uh we can be taken like that and and it's so transparent that it makes the institutions of the media and the government you know the state in general uh as purely like politicking they don't give a shit they're, they're just using this for their agenda and um and that just means that then people will be like oh well see look climate change is all bullshit you know, and just write it all off. And and for me, so that's that's the the thing that hits me most. Just like these kind of things just undermine our ability to just like have actual like nuanced opinions about like what what might be the might be the case. Governments don't give a shit. Corporations don't give a shit. You know, whether it's about climate or race or gender, they all don't give a shit. <laughs> no, I you think know. you make a very good point. It right like that's that that's the crux of the matter is that at the end of the day it's got nothing to do with actual climate change it just has to do with furthering your own ends right whether that's it's my issue i like i actually think the right? climate side of things almost doesn't matter it's like but yeah. but the Relevant. misrepresenting things and trying to use alarmism to to drive things that don't actually do what you hope for like i don't i still I, need, I I probably should go and do the maths, but I still don't believe that like buying Teslas is good is good for the environment, even if you believe um the 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 carbon emission stuff because because Teslas are built with a whole bunch of really reactive metals like aluminium and then even more reactive ones that go in the battery um that get extracted using coal powered electrolysis in China, which is probably the worst um power like i'm pretty sure everyone can agree like coal okay some people really like coal power it's really good but burning coal is not great specifically for the particulates right the 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 quality of the air you know, around the area is not good and so let's let's say even like you, you, essentially what what people do when they buy teslas is they make maybe the air quality in their neighborhood slightly better at the at, at like a at an expense but more than that of somewhere else in the world um and probably bring forward a bunch of carbon emissions and then actually people go oh but you can you can you know you can you can do electrolysis using any sort of power you know you could have wind power you could have solar power but then whilst those forms of energy or power generation are renewable the parts for solar panels wind turbine blades are not renewable and so this to me there's a fantasy and this is what i have an issue with the, the fantasy of mm -hmm. well we can make it all renewable but you don't if you do fine if you if you if you can produce power renewably that then that then powers the electrolysis for all of the 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 you know these these reactive metals that you need for all of these things 
fine. But that's not happening. And until that does, like all, all these people buying Teslas can go fuck themselves because it's quite frankly, it's it's just NIMBY type bullshit. Not not in my backyard, not in my neighborhood. It's 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 grandstanding, right? It's it's virtue signaling. Um and you just drive something that looks like a Ford Mondeo. Like it's not really that impressive. Yeah. I I mean I'm obviously I'm not such a fan of the uh, of the Teslas. Um but besides that, I think it's incredibly hypocritical where you see all of these people cheering uh cheering for you know for tesla and at the same time completely ignoring all of the kids being poisoned and getting killed in the cobalt mines like those people you know fuck those kids right we're making the world better we're fixing the environment <laughs> like are you stupid like it doesn't make any sense. So I, I just find it, I, I find it incredibly hypocritical and disingenuous. I, I think, again, this is another one of those situations, right, where Fumble, like, you know, that Fumble was alluding to, you know, kind of about the, the, the polarization, right? Like it's, it's us and them, things being binary. It is not binary. It's a lot of gray area. And the reality is, is that like, unfortunately, agreeing to the fact that we all exist in the gray area is not profitable. Polarity is profitable. You know, so I, I think that that's, that's, excuse me, that's what's desirable. Well said. And Phil, I have something I think that's going to be very popular. Uh -oh. Very, very, very popular. Are you feeling <laughs> bullish for Bitcoin yet? So uh, uh, our, our boy, our boy Rick, uh, with with help from a few plebs, I think actually, um, Mister Mister T, not Mister T, what's he called, Mister G, Mister G in, yeah, in New Mr. York, Recycling went G. and measured measured yes. the size of the horns so that we can be sure the chain was big enough to, to go over the top. And I think it spent a, a couple of days there. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of um, these these kind of weird. Uh, marketing uh, efforts that happen yeah. from people like Rick and like, crypto graffiti and you know guerrilla marketing arty bitcoiners um um yeah what do we think are you feeling bullish oh i i love it i absolutely love it i i mean we retweeted it from the pleb underground account as soon as i saw that tweet from mr G uh from rick asking about somebody going to measure the horns i understood exactly what was about to happen <laughs> and just to be clear for our, for, for the viewers yes. that don't actually know where this is this bull is um basically next to wall street um yeah. like it's 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 at the the almost the southern tip of of manhattan uh right in the financial district um uh, and so um get, there's thousands of tourists to go to visit it you know daily but there's also a bunch of um fiat banker types that will walk past it um on on their commute that's right. The kings of the fiat banker types. <laughs> so I imagine a lot of people are going to be walking past that and think that it's part of it. You know, like it was like it was meant like that. I I, I did see the tweets about like uh, um, measuring the distance. I I I did not twig what that what they were going to do, <laughs> but I like it. I love it. Um, and I did ask Rick uh, if the oversized chains would be for sale. Um, I mean, why not, right? I had the oversized glasses. I may as well get one of these giant things <laughs> that goes all the way down to my knees. Uh, but yeah, I look. I think it's great. I appreciate the guerrilla marketing. I, I think it makes. I think it makes Bitcoin so much more fun. And you know what? Like this is this is kind of the uh, this is part of the spirit, right? Like this is part of the spirit of of Bitcoin and Bitcoiners. So I I do like it a lot. I think it's total hopium, and I think. Uh, Hey, it exposes, it exposes, I'm sure it exposed a few no coiners to Bitcoin. Very good. Very, very, very good. I have two final stories for, for hoping we go try and go through them a little bit quickly. So the first one, um, a friend of mine, Vikingo, who we've, we've talked about on the show before, his, his advice to plebs is uh, stay solvent and stack sats. Um, uh, what 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 is what is going on here? Why is this hopium? He says, "Want to see me lose? You better fucking stack hard." So he's sharing a tweet here from Yellow. Now, what happened? Yes. So Adam Adam Back is uh, thinks that the price is going to be about 100k next year, uh, and so this 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 conversation goes backwards and forwards. Vikingo says, "You want to bet me?" and 
some other one person wants to come in. Uh, the king says, no, no, no. I want Adam's sats. Adam comes back and says, okay, so <laughs> if, if if it's over 100K by the end of March 2024, Zulu, I assume he means... I don't know what Zulu is. Is, he, is that Zulu? Like, is, that, is, yeah. it, is that a time zone? Zulu I'm not time. sure. Maybe. Huh? Zulu time. I, I've seen that before. I feel like it's like universal time. It's like another I'm word. I'm guessing, but, it's, but, but he's trying to be yeah. cool. Of whatever. But anyway, uh, the, sorry, uh, friend of the it. show, Adam back, friend of the show. Yes. Uh, or, or, or you win, right? How many sats? And Kingo says, let's do a million sats. And Adam, Adam's on. So, uh, yeah. So either, either in six, seven months, Wait, that's not right. Eight months? No, wait, three. I don't know why this is more challenging. Eight eight months' time. Either in eight months' time, the price is going to be 100K, or my friend Vikingo is going to take some Bitcoin from Satoshi. To me, that's really fucking cool. Uh, and that is hopium. Gents. I saw that I saw that tweet this morning and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is we're we're getting to that stage now. We're we're getting to that stage. So look, um, you saw you saw Vikingo's initial tweet. I appreciate it, right? <laughs> if you want to see me lose, you better stack hard. Um so I guess I mean I wanna see him lose, you know? Like I definitely want to see him lose, but at the same time, I also want to keep my hopium in check. I don't want to. I don't want to disappoint myself. And guys, this is why we have fun with this stuff. Okay, we don't take this stuff too seriously in terms of the hopium, in terms of these numbers. This is why we present it in the way that we do. Okay, because people who invest in in that hopium, okay, and put all of their confidence into what other people are saying. Those are the people who end up getting wrecked. Those are the people who end up essentially thinking themselves out of Bitcoin. They they like over think themselves out of it because they don't have the right conviction. So I have to admit, I, I kind of would want to see Vikingo win just to take Adam Sats, but I want to see Adam win because that's better. <laughs> So, I'm kind of surprised Vikingo didn't bet big. So I'm, I'm, I'm Vikingo has been stacking stacking for a little while, and I thought, you know, against Adam as well. But I think it's it's more the one million sats bet seems like a bet that loads people do. Like I played Final Fan, uh, not Final Fantasy, yes. I played fantasy football, um, and one million sats was you know an entry. Like it, it's it's just a nice it's a nice number, right? It's a nice number. Fumble, um, fumble. What are your thoughts? So so it was for for a million sats, right? You say yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still have PTSD from from a uh, last last time uh, uh, people made uh, 100k predictions, <laughs> so I'm still 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 recovering it. They uh, lied. Yeah, <laughs> they lied. <laughs> um, you know, I even told my dad, you know, like, oh yeah, 100k easy. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. Um, I thought two to three hundred k. I swear, at one point, I was getting tempted into like three five hundred k, but I didn't say eight hundred k like Matt O'Dell. So uh, stay humble, stack stack sats, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, for for me, this bet, you know, like you say, it's it's kind of like lighthearted. It's a million sats. Yeah. Uh, it's a significant significant in terms of, you know, it's not insignificant amount amount of money. It's a nice nice amount, but it's not, you know, uh, betting your house on things. And right, it's a thousand dollars at the uh, if if it's at a hundred k, right? Yeah, and yeah. you know, I think that I think that's pretty good. And for for me, um, I'm, I guess I'm I'm bullish about um seeing adam's back adam adam back's journey uh in in all in all this and like how uh you know just listening to an interview with him recently and you know how he's um uh wasn't like straight into uh bitcoin he was very skeptical and this and that and now how he's like a perma ball and like betting betting uh that it's going to be 100k by by uh by april next but year but he also trades yeah he, he's he said it many times that he trades and so yes he, yeah, yeah. He, he's a trader putting out price predictions and so is he trading against it i don't know like this he's, he's a <laughs> smart he's a smart guy he's based in a place where i don't think there's any capital gains uh you know he's he's, he's well set up um yeah. Anyway, good luck to him. The okay. but I think I think I do think Vikingo is going to win that one. I don't think we're going to be a hundred. I, I think Vikingo is going to win win that. So it'll be nice nice win for, win for the plebs. Right. One, whoever wins. One final story for you, uh, gents, and for the listeners out there. Um, some I think I think quite a little ho hopeful little story here. Let's see this purchase happening. Hang on. Okay, ready? Start. 
necessary. Let's continue. Okay, so maybe maybe not truly revolutionary. There, you know, Bitcoin ATMs have existed for a while, um, but that looked pretty smooth. Um, that looked really really smooth. Uh, I didn't see any KYC. I didn't, you know, it's we've got children buying Bitcoin. Was she prompted? Yes. Uh, was this set up by you know? Is the parent a Bitcoiner that talked through? Probably yes. But still, we have kids interacting. Uh, with buying Bitcoin themselves, and I think that's I think that's a little bit powerful, right? There's 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 you could see in the video some excitement around doing the process, right? Learning something new, um, and the learning process looks like it's getting easier, um, at least in 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 certain dis jurisdictions, right? Let less so in um, you know places like the United Kingdom where they banned Bitcoin ATMs. Um, I think was it last year or a couple of years ago. Um, again, um, uh, you know, but in the in the developing world where um, maybe there is the greatest need for Bitcoin, um, there are isn't the same stringent regulation, and so um, as as these Bitcoin ATM services bloom, you're going to have a lot of a lot of people, maybe more and more children, the next generation buying Bitcoin, gents. It's it's a lovely thing to see. I wish I wish there was more of it. You know, it's a, uh, um, you know, I think I think to uh, my my son, he's completely the opposite. He's completely like disparaging of me <laughs> in terms. Of, he's like, oh, you're always so obsessed with Bitcoin. Always talking about Bitcoin. You think it's going to change the world or something? It's like, well, yeah, actually, actually, I do. And I try to explain, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. Um, but uh, but I do see a, a lot of uh, other Bitcoiners' kids actually like engage and you know kind of captures their imagination. Uh, I think kids, especially at that age, but even you know up to the you know to like fifteen or or, or something, they're they're so conditioned. We're all so conditioned that actually appealing to some of the kids is sometimes easier. Not with mine, but <laughs> but um you know for example there's a there's a teacher in the UK who's just um started his, uh teaching using the Me Prima Bitcoin uh textbook you know, kind of a uh, workbook He's using that curriculum uh, in in like an after school club uh and teaching uh kids I think the age range is like it, it's like secondary school so 11 to 16 or something um and they don't need to be sold on like why fiat is bad because it's just kind of explained to a level where you think, okay, well, that's unfair. That's unfair that this money can be printed and other people can be robbed um, just, just by someone else controlling the money. And so there's just like a, you know, the teachers, he, he came to the last meetup and he was, he was saying like, these kids just have like an innate understanding of like fairness. <laughs> um so i think that's a quite a powerful thing that's that's my kind of thoughts that that come to me seeing seeing that it's like uh uh the unconditioned mind i mean we're all conditioned from birth but like get get them young you know see the people that are actually engaging with kids um what was it the sham shamery as well i think shamery do yeah. something do, do some kind of games and things with kids and, and it's just such a powerful thing and uh that i think is is a great bit of hopium to to uh to end the segment on because you know it's the, the cliche children are the future blah blah but it's it's legit and like if you if you engage kids with bitcoin early and they like grow up as bitcoin kids and you know just complete innate bitcoiners then uh you know coming to the world from that basis and you know everything else that comes with with big being a bitcoiner uh and how that kind of uh might frame the world around you know independence and you know freedom and autonomy um so yeah bullish i just i really appreciate that fumble and i just wanted to add that you know what people you know people who may not think that that's you know hopium or really you know significant in any way should remember that you know banking technology hasn't changed in you know i i don't know how many years 
uh, and essentially this is the first time in history that um, any type of financial tech is really feeling um, any pressure from an outside source to um, you know, to innovate or specifically, I hate using that word innovate. Right, the back but, end, right? You mean, yeah, Phil, right? exactly, the, the, right? The front... Upgrading the back end, yeah. you know, like it, it, exactly. Like, I mean, think about it, right? Every single financial product that has come out, it's all come out from them. You know what I mean? SoftBank, you know, like all of these online banks, what they're calling fintech banks, all of this crap, okay, is just extensions of the current system. So to see little kids just sit there and just buy Bitcoin with their little tablets and stuff like that, uh, having that interaction. And this is a 14 year old technology. You know what I mean? Like Apparently that ATM also was, was engineered in El Salvador. So we've got, um, uh -oh. you know, developing countries engineering their own Bitcoin ATMs. That's bullish. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think, look, I, I think that we're, you know, maybe, maybe we're kind of underestimating how bullish this really is. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Hey, I love it, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. All right, guys, that wraps up the Hopium. And that does it for us for this week of the Pleb Underground. Guys, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on fountain.fm. You could stream us sats through Breeze. Before we go to Walton Fumble, how do people find you? So you can find me at either Fumble BTC on Twitter or London BTC Space on Twitter. Absolutely awesome. Thank you again for joining us. And Walton, how do we wrap this one up, my friend? Fuck shit coins. That's right. Fuck shit coins. Catch you all next week. Yeah.